In this video, we're going to set up a Splunk alert. Now basically what a Splunk alert is, is it's really just a search, but after a search might reach a certain criteria, we can attach it to some kind of action, such as emailing or sending a webhook or even a flat file. So let's start by creating an alert. You always start by creating an alert by creating a search. So what we're going to do here is we're going to build a simple search and then make it an alert. So I'm going to click on data summary and then from here I get to pick my data source. So I can navigate from host to sources and I will go to sources and I will navigate to this log file called vendorsales.log. Now this is a log file that has fictitious sales for a specific vendor. So what I can do here is I can create a search. So I'm not going to go for the last 24 hours. Let me go for the past 30 days or so. Now while I'm doing the search, I should get, you know, maybe 10,000 or close to 100,000 events that come back. So at this point, what I can do is I could refine my search, and after my search is refined and I'm happy with it, what I can do is I can save it as an alert. So here we're just going to keep a simple search, and we're going to keep this simple search as an alert. So you can look at patterns if you wish, or statistics, or you can visualize your data. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep it simple and we're just going to save this. Now basically what an alert is, is it's a search that has some sort of defined action that goes with it. And to save this as an alert, we can go to save as and choose alert. Now what this will do is this will save it in Splunk as an alert. Now as we save it as an alert, there's different things that we can do. So we need to give it a title and a description and then we can do things such as the permission, the alert type, the triggering condition, and we can put in a action what happens when this alert actually gets fired. So basically what's going to happen is this search will get fired at different intervals, either real time or scheduled. Now real time can take a lot of resources. So usually what we're going to do is we're going to schedule this alert to fire and actually that's really a misnomer. When we schedule something, we're really scheduling to find the fire. And then if, you know, the search reaches a criteria, we can have the alert. So here what we're going to do is we're going to search every day and we get to pick the time. In this case, we could pick some arbitrary time. A lot of this is self-explanatory. We're going to pick noon. So every day at noon, this find is going to run. And now we have the triggering condition. So when we have like the number of results reaches a certain number, what we can do is we can trigger the condition, which would be, you know, an email, a text file, or a webhook. So here we're going to trigger once, and then you have throttling. What throttling does is it determines how long between alerts do you actually wait. Uh, the find can take a long time. So if you're waiting a long time, you probably want to throttle it to be a long time between searches. And then you have your actions. Now for actions, what we can do is we can do a bunch of different things, such as run a script, send an email. We can add to triggering events, log files, webhooks. In this case, we're going to set an email alert. So we get to put in the email address, and I will put in myself. Feel free to email me if you like. And put in the priority, the subject, and the message. And at this point, we could click on save, and our alert is saved. So now this event will fire, this alert will fire on specified intervals, and will send an email if a specific criteria has been met. So in this video, you learned how to write events, you learned how to write alerts, and you learned how to save alerts. So what we can do now is we can save this as plain text or HTML when we're sending this email, and then you see this alert's been saved. And if you like, what you can do to finalize this is you can go to view alert, and look at the alert specification that you just created. And there it is. So in this video, you went into Splunk and you created an alert, you fired the alert, and then you set a alerting condition of sending an email when a criteria has been met.